Today we take a look at a lapis inlay in a black ceramic. Stick around to see our take. All right, the tools we need is just a little channel, uh, yeah, little channel black ceramic inlay, some lapis. Uh, we have both of these on our website. The Afghan Lapis is AAA, so it's super blue. Not a whole lot of white or brown specs, which makes it amazing for inlay. And the way that I usually like to do the Lapis the best is to make it as small as possible. If you can get the Lapis into a dust form, that in my opinion is the best. You don't want any large pieces. And so this is how we crush our Lapis is that white piece is just an aerosol container lid. I cut off the top and now I use it as my little protector so that the stones don't, fly, don't go flying everywhere. It works really well and it was free with the can. So it was a great choice. I am crushing way more than I need because I just, I, I use lapis often. And so this pile here is maybe five to 10 grams somewhere in there and that way I just have it for the future for rings so you'll see I just go over it and just keep smashing and smashing until I get the uh, right consistency of the material I'm using a little hammer that we got from Harbor Freight I'm using an anvil that we got from Ham Harbor Freight as well I like using this material because some of the material that I've tried crushing with in the past has turned my stones dark or got them dirty. I've never had dirty stones using the hammer and the anvil, so I, I just chose to go with those going forward. So the first thing that we do is we never use glue first unless we're gluing in whole pieces. And I'm just doing crushed stuff like this. I'll put the material in first and then glue over, over it. And then these pieces that are coming out here are a little bit bigger than I do like. Like I said, I like it to be dust, just complete dust. So this, these large rock pieces uh, might just be a lack of, I didn't want to keep smashing stuff with a hammer. Or maybe I got impatient, I, uh, but ideally I would like to have kept going. So we just go a little bit at a time with the stones and then a thin CA to let it get all soaked up. And then we want to be careful not to add too much glue. So just enough one or two drops until you see the stones that you just put in get wet. We don't want the glue to go all around the ring. It will then fill up with glue and you'll have to rush to fill it in um, so that you don't have any blank or empty spots that don't have any, any stones at all. And you'll see that the... the with this stone anyway, the glue just soaks right into it. And then we just keep rotating. You can see that once we get that one, that first spot done on the ring, it just creates a wall so you can just keep going as is. It's very, very easy. This beats trying to press the stone into glue. If you use a thick glue on the channel and then add the stone, you kind of have to press in. It just gets dirty and it's hard. So this is how we do almost every type of stone inlay. This also prevents any sort of air bubbles as well. And then once we have that initial thing, I'll go through the whole ring. I'll get even smaller dust if it wasn't dust to begin with and I'll fill in all those extra holes that are on the edges or inside that I notice. I'll dump out of our tray into our container. And then from here, we're gonna bring it to the lathe and do another step that helps with air bubbles. What we do is add a few drops to the inlay after it's all dry. Basically, we're doing like a finish and then I seal it up with accelerator just so that it dries faster. And then what you end up with is just a glob. However, now, now all the air bubbles should be completely sealed. You shouldn't have a problem. You might have a few that don't get completely sealed up, 
However, this has always made things a lot easier for me, is just doing this pre-seal. And then we'll take it to the lathe and take all of the material down to the metal. The other nice thing about making dust inlays like this is that you can see with the carbide tool that it just comes off so easy. There's no sanding or anything at this point. It you just comes right, right down to the metal very, very easily. And then I've also noticed if you're using a carbide blade on a ceramic core, you do want to be very careful on the edges that you don't get too aggressive. I've seen some of my edges kind of chip out with the carbide. And so just be careful when you're on the edges with any sort of carbide tip. And that is why I'll bring out the sandpaper after this is to clean up the edges completely as I didn't want to get too aggressive. So with my fingernail, I'm just checking to see what sort of lip we have for our finish. I do think that you can finish this ring a couple ways. You could just bring it down to the metal polish it really well and just have the natural stone exposed and that would look really well really good too especially since the lapis polishes up really nice or you could do it like we're doing here and do it at a finish like you would with any other wood ring just a tiny little bit of finish the reason I choose to do that is because the finish gives it a little bit more shine just like a clear coat and so anytime you add a clear coat, it's going to shine a little bit more than without a clear coat. And so that was acetone. That was just to clean up any dust. And you could see the color change from a light blue to a darker blue. And you'll see it again here after we're done sanding. So sanding, I'm just cleaning up the edges again. Um, anything that we couldn't get or what I wasn't comfortable getting with the carbide tool. And you can see the dusty blue and then we had the acetone and it really darkens everything up and then i slow down to 150 rpm to 200 rpm and then add a few drops of the uh, flexia uh, that flexia is what we always use as the finish just because it has a little bit of flexibility to it um, so it doesn't crack as under pressure as much as the regular ca so we'll let that dry up. It gets really ugly, which is great. It's fine as long as we don't have any air bubbles. And then we'll take this with our carbide tip again. And we will clean it down to the metal as close as we can get. And then from there, I will bring out a 220 grit sandpaper and just sand it down, making sure that we get all of the glue or all of the finish off the metal. And you can see the lightness on the metal. So anytime you see that, you know you still have glue on the metal. It's very important that you get that all off. Your pictures won't look good if it's on there and the finished product doesn't look as good if you, if you don't expose all of the metal. So this is 220 with wet sanding. And then we go to 800 wet sanding. And then we go to 1500 is this gray piece and that's all the sanding I'll do it's a very quick process all I want to make sure is that the scratches are minimal and then that there's no glue on the ring so from there take it to the polishing wheel where we use a ZAM ZAM is wax polish it's a, a stick and it uses the heat of the cotton wheel to apply to the cotton wheel some people say it gets really messy which it kind of does but it's also it works so well. Um, you can see that the, the green polish is sticking to it, and that's great, that's fine. So we'll just keep going until we get rid of all the micro scratches. And then the nice thing about Zam on things like tungsten or ceramic is it will also help take away the finish on the edges. So right here I'm feeling for finish, and if I if I feel it, then I'll use the Zam to get, get it off all the way. It's a little bit safer than a razor blade, and then it's also good if you miss anything on the lathe so from there we always bring it to a clean polish wheel here we'll get rid of all the green zam and this is it this is the final product there are a few micro scratches i might bring it back however the ending result is great and again we have all of the material on our website the glue the, the zam polish the rings 
So thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you all next time.